All right, well, thanks for such a warm welcome. I'm just glad I didn't have to follow the tax girl. Holy smokes, isn't she incredible? <laughs> Who knew taxes, numbers were easy and taxes are fun, right? So, oh, so I'm just waiting for this to come up. I've got a bit of a present. So I'm gonna do things a little bit differently than uh, the other speakers. The other speakers have been really motivational and insp inspirational and getting into your head. I'm gonna be a little bit more tactical. Is that okay? Yeah. So, with the show of a hell yes, who wants to win more clients and make more sales? Yeah. Hell yes, okay. And who would like to not just know how to do it, but actually have a tool that makes it possible? Hell yes? Yeah. So not so much? So again, I'm gonna give you a tool, but you have to say hell yes. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> All right. So I'll just keep going while this is being fixed. So I sounds like I need to change who I am, but I'm the marketing medic, and the reason I call myself the marketing medic is because I was a paramedic for 12 years, okay? And there's two things that made me a medic. I was a little bit different than other medics, and the first thing was empathy. I showed more empathy for my patients than, than other medics did. I thought it was super important to understand their fears, and what they're going through as much as their illness or their injury. So that's how I treated them. The second thing I did, well, actually most medics do this. We focus on results, okay? We had standard operating procedures. Oh, I guess I can change the slide now. There we go, that's me. Yeah, so we had standard operating procedures, but what really mattered, first and foremost, is my mic working? Yeah. Okay, yeah. It's, it's quiet back here, okay. So what mattered first and foremost was results. Did the patient die? I was also a firefighter, did the fire get put out? That's what was most important. And as entrepreneurs and as business owners, should you guys be focusing on the process or the results? The results. Are you getting, winning more clients? Are you making more sales? Okay? So what I want to do is show you how to do that, but I'm going to need a volunteer. But I need a very specific volunteer, and I'm going to bribe that volunteer. I'm so afraid to come near the speaker. Okay. So the, this volunteer, if you come up on stage, I'm going to give you a free copy of my book. I'll autograph it. So it'll be a collector's edition. It's gonna be worth a lot of money one day. <laughs> but here's what I'm looking for. So stand up if you're willing to volunteer and you are a single woman, sit down. <laughs> single, so stand up if you're a single woman, but sit down if you don't like dogs. If you don't like dogs. What? You don't like dogs, <laughs> sitting down. Okay, sit down, dogs. <laughs> sit down if you don't like horses. If you don't like horses, sit down. Sit down if you don't like the outdoors, okay? Sit down if you never, ever want to get married. Okay, cool. Okay, so I got four content, five content. I'll just bring the closest person. Closest person, come on up. That's you, closest person. All right, come on up, yep. So I'm gonna ask you a really, oh, so what's your, so my name's Mike, what's your name? My name is Nancy DeParga. Nancy, okay. So. Big cheer for Nancy, everyone. Okay, so Nancy, I have a super simple question. Just a yes or no answer, okay? It's a, it's a serious question, though, so you have to take it seriously. Are you ready? Okay, cool. Nancy? Will you marry me? No, this is serious. <laughs> We're not you... getting married. <laughs> okay, she said no. Whew. You're hilarious. You gave me a heart attack. Stay here. I'm not done with you. So this is a mistake most businesses make, okay? I identified my target audience. I was looking for a single female who likes dogs, who likes horses, likes the outdoors, and wants to get married. So I said, there's my audience, here's my offer, right? And that's what you're doing in your business. You're finding your audience and you're saying, I found you, here's my thing, you should buy it. And what do they say? You say yes first. <laughs> but she was joking, she was joking. She said no, right? Yeah, peer pressure. Is, and actually, you're, I'm gonna come back to you. Well, I'm, you're always here, I'm gonna stay with you. So on a scale of one to 100, scale of one to 100, with one being like, no way, never are you ever gonna, uh, will I ever marry you to 100, it's like, 
let's go, jump off stage, call an Uber, and go to the, the courthouse. How, where are we on the marriage scale? Just pick a number. Yeah, because for the book. Keep the eye on the prize, eye on the prize. Quick, well, come on. Number one, I don't know. No, what just quick, give me a number. Okay, 10. 10, oh my God, 10. Five. Okay, five, it's low. Okay, we'll go with 10. 10 was your first answer. Okay, and so what I've done wrong here is you don't know anything about me. That's why you only gave me a 10. So let's go through who I am, okay? So I'm a huge dog lover. On the screen, you'll see my five rescue dogs, okay? So up at the top on the, on the, uh, on the dog bed there is Charlie, the, the brown basset hound. Beneath Charlie is Buddy, the black and white basset. Brandon knows all about black and white bassets. Uh, beneath uh, Buddy is Fred, the old dog. He's the border collie. He's 14 years old. He pees in the house all over the place. To his right, we've got the neurotic uh, Willie, the Labradane. And then on the right side of the picture is Devil Spawn himself, Biko, the crazy Australian dog, Australian Shepherd dog. And then, are you paying attention? Because I'm making my pitch to you here. <laughs> and then we, I've got horses, and it's hard for you to see, but I've got these re three really cool horses, okay? And then there's my house. Oh, you gotta go see the house. So I have a 6,000 square foot home. Oh, just stay up here. I've got a 6,000 square foot home on 164 acres with uh, 10 kilometers of trails, okay? And we're off the grid, okay? That's me. <laughs> So now that you know about me, and this is a serious, if you say yes, we're leaving. <laughs> You're still gonna say no, aren't you? Okay, so she's foot clamped, she's foot clamped, that's all right. So, but how are we now on the scale one to 100? That was a 10, am I any better? 50. 50, that was a... <laughs> I'm gonna come back to this. I'm gonna come back to why I've jumped so much. But technically, and I'm gonna come back to this, I, I'll gonna come back to this, but what did I do wrong there when I explained who I was? Who did I talk about? You. Me. Yeah. me, 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 me. I've got a house, I've got dogs, I've got a horse. Me, 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 me. And so with your businesses, what are you guys talking about? Me, 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 me. You're talking about your features, right? When you should be focused more on the benefits, I should be drawing you into the story. So you're in big trouble now, because we're gonna do this, okay? <laughs> So here's the deal. Oh, I wish you could see this. So get down there. Yeah, so go down there now because you've got to see the storyboard here. So this is, my, this is my bedroom. Okay, it's an 800 square foot bedroom with a gorgeous, super, super uh, comfortable bed. Okay, this is where we'll wake up in the morning. I'm going to bring you breakfast and bread, whatever you like. You know, berries, fresh berries, yogurt, granola, bacon and eggs if you like. And then once you're done eating breakfast in this lovely bedroom, I'm gonna go out to the barn, tack up the horses, because you like horses, and we're gonna go for a ride back to the lake. Oh, I forgot to mention, I have a private lake at the back of my property, okay? So if we go straight there, it'll take about 15, 20 minutes on the trails, so we go straight there, but if you wanna go for a ride, I've got 10 kilometers of trails, there's some logging roads, we can go for a couple hours. However long you wanna ride, we'll ride, okay? You can see on the right, that's, uh, that's us crossing the, uh, the beaver dam there. And if you look in the back, there's two little animals. Those are my pygmy goats. I forgot. We have pig I, hope, I, didn't, I hope you like pygmy goats because they came with me on that ride. But when we go, we're not going to bring the goats. We're going to bring the dogs. Okay? So we're going to go to the lake with the dogs. We'll play fetch. But do you know what your problem was with Nancy? You forgot to bring your bathing suit. But does that matter because it's a private lake? Nobody's there. Swimsuits are optional. Okay, so we're gonna spend the morning playing in the water, playing with the dogs. We'll have a nice picnic lunch, nap under the tree. Huh? How's that sound? Interesting. Interesting. So now, on a scale of one to 100, with a day like that, how willing are you to marry me? I was at a 50. Am I getting closer? I went down? Oh, a 90? Where are we? Maybe eight. An eight? Eight. Eight. I dropped way down. So my targeting was way off. Okay, so that's cool. This is my next slide. This is coming up. This is coming up. So that's, that's fine that you said that. Because it's, it's okay. 
But this is a mistake a lot of business owners are making. They come up with a good story, they get beyond the features, they've got a benefit, but they only tell the one story. And what you have to understand today, in 2024, today is the worst day in history for people to trust you, like you, they have so much skepticism, right? So that one story, most of the time won't cut it. You need more stories, you have to get more stories. So what if we went on 20 dates, but actually I'm gonna skip to the next slide, because on a scale of one to 100, if I kept telling you those stories, I wouldn't do very well, would I? So this is the thing. The trick is to say and to do the right things, okay? When she, Nancy didn't know that much about me, she was willing to marry me. But then when she saw that we're gonna live like really rustically, she's like, no, I'm a city girl, right? And so I can't be telling her stories that she doesn't wanna hear. I need to say, listen, we're gonna go fine dining. We're gonna fly to Paris. We're gonna go to Marseille. We're gonna see museums, right? Now I know because but my targeting was off first time and that's why I scored so low. So let's hear from Nancy. For Nancy. <laughs> Grab a book and I'll sign it later. And I'm keeping the ring. <laughs> so the important thing is you have to understand your audience, okay? And there's two levels of understanding that you have to have. First is an experiential understanding and the second is an emotional understanding. So on the experiential side of things, what we have is at the one end of the spectrum, we have the unaware people. And so let's keep with the whole uh, engagement story, okay? So imagine I had a 22-year-old. Um, Forbes, what's your daughter's name? Oh, you're going to marry her? No, she's going to say no, right? How big is your bank statement? No. She's 21. So if I brought McKenna up here, and she loved everything she heard, but how willing would she be to marry me? She wouldn't be, right? Because she just got out of school. She's got her business going. I bet she's got a whole bunch of girlfriends she hangs out with. And if she's the love of my life and she's the one I want to marry, it's going to take me a lot of work to convince her that married life is better than what she has right now, right? And on the other end of the spectrum, when Nancy came on stage, and I, actually, we, I'm not going to focus, but pick on her. But let's imagine another like 42-year-old woman comes, let's say McKenna comes up on stage 20 years later and she's never found the right guy. But Forbes is like, I want grandkids, I want grandkids. And McKenna wants grandkids too, right? And she's 42 years old, she knows she's only got a couple years left to reproduce, <laughs> right, at 42. So imagine I bring her up on stage at 42, how hard is it for me to get her to marry me at that point, right? It's not gonna be that hard at all because she knows that I've got all my own teeth, I can stand upright, I'm a sperm donor, right? She's probably gonna say yes as soon as she comes up on stage. And so, so we're talking about this in the engagement world, but this is the same for your audience. You have people at all five of these levels and you have to speak to them at the right time, right? You've got people right now, let's get some more hell yeses going. How many of you people have a solution that solves a problem, but your audience doesn't even know they have a problem. Hell yes, if that's you. Hell yeah. Right? So in order to convert those people into clients, what do you have to do? You have to take them on 20 dates, 30 dates, 40 dates. You have to do all that work to educate them first about their problem before you can tell them about your solution. But you also have people that have been stalking you on Facebook. They've been watching all your Instagram reels. They've seen all your YouTube videos. They follow your podcast. They've listened to that two or three times each one, right? So for those people, what are they waiting for? A sale. Black Friday sale, 20% off, boom, sold, right? You don't have to do any work. You don't have to educate them to the problem. They know what it is, and they know that you're the one to provide the solution, okay? And then there's three steps in the middle, and as you move up the pyramid, that's less work that you have to do because they're more and more aware, okay? Then, after you get the experiential understanding, you need to have that emotional understanding. And I've broken this up into two phases. There's short-term and long-term. So in the short-term, what are their difficulties? What problems are they having today that they want a solution tomorrow, okay? But in the long-term, what are their dreads? What do they fear? Like, oh my gosh, like, like 42-year-old woman, she's fearing, like, dying alone, right? And so what's the solution for that? And your audience has these short-term difficulties and these short-term dreads. And what you wanna do is you wanna agitate, in your marketing message, you wanna agitate those pain points and show how you can provide what we call it the pleasure, right? Because people are gonna run from the pain toward the pleasure. So you have to agitate both of those, all right? 
But how are you going to know what those pain points are? Can you ask them? You could, but are they going to be honest with you? Probably not, because people aren't honest anymore, right? They're not honest with their parents. They're not honest with their friends. They're not honest with their priests. They're not honest with their therapists, okay? There is one time when people are brutally honest. Who knows when that one time is? When they're drunk, when they're dying. Good answers, but eh, no, wrong. <laughs> when they write in their diary, right? How, who, you were the one, who said, you, you did the three-day writing, right? Yeah. yeah. So when you're writing in your diary, what happens is your subconscious just flows through you onto the page, and quite often your conscious is like, oh my gosh, like where did that come from? That's why Carrie, where's Carrie? That's why Carrie wanted us to write our vision down, because we all had like this sort of ethereal idea of what it was, but until we wrote it down, it wasn't concrete, and we didn't on a conscious level even know. So it's the diary. So with the hell yes, how valuable would it be if you could read your avatar's diary? Nobody wants to? Hell yes? Yeah. Hell yes. Okay, it's a hell yes. Hell yes. <laughs> so here is uh, a diary entry. So this is, so we're going back to the engagement thing, right? And so the first line of the diary is, today feels like a reflection of every fear and hope I've harbored silently. Imagine if you could read that for your audience. Jesus. <laughs> okay, imagine if you could read that for, for your audience. How valuable would that be if you know there are ever, every hope and fear, okay? Let's look at the second page. It says, my heart aches for motherhood for the chance to nurture and love unconditionally. Okay, so there, imagine I've got, I've got a crush on this woman, I want to marry her, and because I love her so much, I invade her privacy, and while she goes into the bathroom, I go into her bedroom, and I read her diary. And I see this line about motherhood, right? So when she comes out, what am I gonna talk about? No, I'm gonna say, hey, this summer, you wanna backpack around Europe? No, I'm not going to say that, right? Because that's not what she wants. If she comes out, I'm like, I've got this amazing three months trip for backpacking around Europe. We're going to go here. We're going to go there. We're going to see the Eiffel Tower. It's going to be amazing. She's going to kick me into the curb. Because instead, what I need to say is exactly what you said. While she's in the bathroom, she comes out. I'm going to say, listen, there was a, just a commercial with his uh, father playing ball with his son. And oh my gosh, I can't wait till we have that. I can't wait to put a saddle on Nelly and we teach our child to ride, and we'll go back to the lake, and we'll teach the child to swim, and we'll build tree forts, it's just gonna be so awesome. How good is my night gonna be after I tell that to her? It's gonna be pretty darn good. <laughs> I'm gonna get all the stuff. But that's easy, okay? It's easy to understand how, we're, how you can do it with uh, you know, a romantic relationship and you know, being a peeper and looking into that diary. But how do you do it with business? So, Let's look at this. How many of you guys came to this event saying, I can't wait to come to the uh, Tag Talk because I want to learn about vision? Who said that? Nobody did, right? But how many of you felt this way? Every night I lie awake with a heart full of passion, but my mind is amazed with no clear direction. Okay, who felt like that before they got here? I'm the only one? Most of us came here, right? And so what did Carrie do when she came on stage yesterday? She... She asked us all, do you feel this way? And we all said yes. She asked us, who's making the money you want to make? And nobody raised their hand, right? We all said we we're without direction. So what did Carrie do? Carrie says, you need a vision. And what did we all do? Uh-huh. Yes, we need a vision. Because she explained what the problem was, and she explained how a vision is, is the solution that we're looking for, OK? So when we're looking at that experiential awareness, this is at the the uh, bottom of the thing, where like the unaware, the problem aware. Like these people are aware of the problem, but they're not looking for a solution. Because what other speaker did we have that could, I, that could address the same problem? Brian, right? What did Brian come up in here and do? Boom, boom, snick, boom, snick, boom, boom, snick, right? If you can get in that rhythm in your life, do you think that would clear up this problem? It would as well, right? So, what we're doing at this stage is we're talking about the solution. We're not talking about your solution, specifically, we're talking about the solution in general. And Carrie didn't sell any of her stuff yesterday. She sold us on the solution, which was the vision, okay? The next slide, whoops, the next, um, the next diary entry is a little bit more evolved. So today the fog cleared. I can see the outline of my dream ready to be filled with color and life. I know my passion's purpose now, 
and I'm drafting the blueprint of my future. It's time to share my vision with the world to step out of the shadows and into the light. Okay, so what Carrie wanted us to do was create our vision with the what and the why. And we all did that. We're like, yes! And they're all like, how? We don't know how. And this is when Carrie swoops in and says, I know you've got your vision, but you don't know how. I can help you get there. Okay, so you see how Carrie's message will change as you evolve through this level of experiential awareness. Does that make sense to everybody? Hell yes, if that makes sense. Yes. Okay, cool. Because once you can see inside, the, uh, inside these diaries, then you're looking into the very souls of your audience. And how valuable is that, right? Because you don't want to just understand your audience, you want them to feel understood. And it's once you have that connection that you're going to be able to make those sales, okay? So now I've told you, the, now I've done it, right? I've told you the what. The problem is you're not understanding your audience. I've told you why you want to understand them. You're like, yeah, that's awesome. We're going to read diaries. So we're all going to get like ninja costumes and break into people's homes in the middle of the night and hope they write. But that's not realistic. So what I've done is, who is it? Uh, yeah, Raul. He said he's using Chappie. I've always called it Chat GPT, but starting today I'm calling it Chappie. What I've done is I've been able to uh, create these prompts that go in that educates uh, Chappie all about Eugene Schwartz and breakthrough advertising and how to create the most detailed avatar possible. And then once Chappie is aware of your, um, your avatar's deepest, darkest secrets, then I get it to write the diaries that you saw today. So how many people would find having these diaries written by Chappie valuable? Say hell yes. Hell yeah. yes. Okay, cool. So there it is. There's the PR code, QR code. Scan that, and, I, and you get the prompts. You get the prompts for how to, uh, how to get Chappie to write these diary entries for you. If it's too, can't see it, it's uh, www.themarketingmedic.ca backslash stage hyphen offer, okay? And because this is only a 20-minute talk, I couldn't teach you everything you need to know about marketing in 20 minutes, surprisingly. But I've included two other super important uh, chat, chappy prompts that I've created. One is how to um, create your big differentiator. That's what's going to separate you from all your competitors. And it also, Chappie's going to help you create uh, an irresistible offer. Okay? So you're going to get all those prompts 100% for free. So who sees the value of these diary entries? Hell yes? Okay, that's easy. We all come to these conferences, and what do we do when we get home? We're all pumped up, and we're going to change the world, and what do we do? Nothing. <laughs> Usually nothing, right? And so, this is a solid blood oath you're swearing to me right now. Who is going to leverage these diary entries to better understand their audience and craft better messages? Hell yes. Hell yes. yes. It's fun. So I worked with a, a vocal coach. And I did, I, so I, I do mostly done for you services. And before I even like meet with the guy, I send them stuff that they're, and so I sent him a diary entry for his audience. And when I talked to him, he actually started to tear up as we were talking about the diary entry. Cause he's like, I've been doing this for 30 years. He's instructed some of the biggest Broadway singers. He's, oh, and, oh man. And a couple of famous singers too. <laughs> Anyways, but uh, he's like, yeah how do you know your audience so much better than I do? And I didn't tell him. <laughs> I don't, Chappie does. But, uh, but yeah, this is super, super powerful. It really, because the diary is told in more of a story form, you feel it more. And what I tell my people to do is like, as you're going through and you see your, your audience has this problem, imagine you're talking to your sister or your brother or your, your, your child, right? And just speak to them in that way. And how you, would, I, I see in your diary entry, you made this comment. This is what you should do. And that's the video that you want to create, how you respond to that one line of the, of the diary entry. And this is a three-page diary entry, so you're going to have a lot of content to work with. But like I said, this is only one part of empathic marketing. Everything else is in my book, and I've got a couple left after Nancy. I don't even know if I should give Nancy one since she, <laughs> she, she wouldn't marry me. But I've got copies of my book at the back. So if you want a copy of Empathic Marketing, then uh, come back and see me. I'll let you know how we can make that happen. So I've got, is there, I've got two minutes left. Does anybody have any questions? Yeah. What are the data points that you utilize to, to make these prompts to, to get your avatar? 
Like I say, so the first thing I do is I educate it to go and research Eugene Schwartz and breakthrough advertising because that, he's like the godfather of direct response marketing. And so by understanding, by chat understanding what Eugene Schwartz thinks about it, then I've got a list of prompts. Just download and you'll see. Then I've got all the things that you need to. Well, I'm saying like, like a unique individual, like what are you giving their data points to, to model them as an individual? Well, I'm not doing it. Chat's doing it. Oh, it's, it's just smarter than all of us. So, yeah, so, I, so if, you're, um, yeah, if you're an entrepreneur, an entrepreneur making like ten dollars to $50,000 a year, who wants to go beyond that? That's all I need to tell Chad, right? Oh, so you're not giving like personal info. Oh, no, it's, no, no, it's, it's an aggregate of, of everybody in the world. Yeah, yeah, no. No, it's not. No, Chad didn't like burrow into somebody's computer and actually steal a, a diary entry. No, it's, it's, it's an aggregate of the, of the avatar that it created. Okay. Well, it is. It is. It's a super personal diary entry, but it's make believe. It's complete. It's a complete aggregate of the. Uh, yeah. Any other questions? All right. Well, cool. I will be here all night. <laughs> <laughs>